uh, 90s and things of that nature, you know, it was more of, you know, like the clothes and the little shoes and little things of that nature. For us, that was kids and things at the time, you know, it was about toys and video games and things of that nature. But nowadays, as you like really look at it, it's like everything's more in the technology age. It's like most of us have most of the technology stuff that we have. Or even if somebody, you know, get us another iPhone for Christmas or I watch whatever and things of that nature and we already have one. And it's just something about that. Be like, ooh, yeah, well, you know, we got another one. Ooh, ooh, and things of that nature. But you really take a look and take a look back and it's like, you know. I'm just going to say it's like, you take a look back and you see not just the gifts, but when you really start going down memory lane, you start seeing certain family members that would actually still hear the joy that they brought to you that you brought to them for folks that you hadn't seen in such a long time. Family members that you had to see in a long time. Like, I know, let me just say, like, there's going to be a whole lot of families that's going to take a look at some old family videos of certain people that used to be here. That's not here anymore. Around Christmas time, last, last year, if I'm not mistaken, no, 2014. Well, it's my great-grandfather on Christmas night, 10 o'clock p.m. We'll never forget it. He was just fighting cancer and whatnot. Overcame it earlier in the year and things, things of that nature. Kind of came back. Mind you, he's, he was a little bit of an older man in his 90s. Him and my great-grandmother. She passed away on St. Patrick's Day. Of 2015. And so. And my uncle that recently passed away on. Not mistaken. I think it was Halloween of this year. And so just. Even when I'm uncle's funeral. And the pastor. That my great. That my, that my grandparents know. That my great grandparents knew as well. And my family knows as well. And my grandparents church. And things of that nature. He said just under 23 months, we've been to three different funerals. It's like, yeah, and it's like basically on crazy little holidays or whatever. So it's just, it was just crazy. But 2014, because I remember I was at work and something my spirit was telling me, you need to see your great grandfather. When you get those type of, you need to go see somebody's. I mean, you need to go see somebody, type of tabs, you know, it's, it makes your day very weird, because you know something's up, and you know that the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you a message, but sometimes we try to block that message out, because we don't want it to believe it to be true, but I remember, because Grandma had gumbo, the family was over, and I just got off of work. I was burnt out as well, too. Went to see my great-grandfather in a convalescent home and things of that nature. And um, I'm not trying to bring in by spirit sound. I'm just trying to give you guys, um, I'm trying to let you guys know why family is supporting. So just bear with me. And so, remember to see my great-grandfather. I don't think that he knew that the family was, you know, most of us, we would kind of like switch off from like who was going to go see him and things and nature, come right back to the house and stuff like that. So I don't think that he knew that we was there. He probably did. Probably couldn't really see us because he was ready. He was getting ready to transfer over to the next world. To which I know he's in a better place right now. To which I know he probably come and tell the rest of us. It's great up here with the Lord. Forget all that is down there where you guys are at. I would not want to come back. <laughs> I believe there's a whole lot of our family members that's up there with the Lord and other relatives that pass on way before 
and we may know, may not know, and they all say the same thing. We having fun up here. We would not want to go back to all that chaos and crap that's on Earth. <laughs> Whereas I don't blame them. Don't blame them at all. I know some of y'all probably don't believe in what I'm talking about, but it is what it is. So just bear with me. This is why I'm, this reason why I, this is the point I get to is why family is important. So I think out there has some my great grandfather had uh, gave him a hug, kiss on his forehead, and I just don't want to say just keep fighting. I already knew after I left that after I left that convalescent home, um, convalescent place, whatever. I already knew that I was gonna see him in the physical flesh. Strong, mighty man of God that he was. Like I could walk to my, like my great grandparents are so alive. I could walk to the back of their house and you just feel the love and feel the strength. But you also feel that strength from my great grandfather because he was a World War Two vet, so. He has a high level of respect from the family because he was like the don of the family, period. But he has a high level of respect to where you know you don't say nothing out of line, out of barriers around great granddaddy. Because you could tell great granddaddy was not once we mess with. Love this family dearly. And I have a big family too, so, you know, truly, he was truly loved. Great grandma was truly loved by everybody. Truly loved by everybody. Like, we would all die for our great grandparents if anybody had set trip with them. I would die for my grandparents if anybody tried to set trip with them. I would die for my family, period, if anybody tried to set trip for my family. Because I'm that very protective. <laughs> Even on my siblings. You know, we all have siblings that may be annoying and things of the nature, but, you know, for us being the oldest out of all of them, we still love them regardless. We would also die for them, too, if anybody wanted to set trip on the siblings. Straight up, <laughs> take somebody out of this world and they want to set trip with the siblings. Then again, some of us might reason with the person and ask them why they try to do what they try to do. If it gets to the point where they don't listen to you, that's where you got to give it ticking out. But that's another story for another day. <laughs> well, I'm trying to get to the point is this at there, I left the place. Went to back to my grandparents' house, and I remember I was talking to God for a good probably around 45 almost close to two hours or something like that in the back of my great grandparents house I was out the little patio area just talking to God and if I'm not mistaken I think it was a full moon and yeah I think it was a little bit part of a full moon and I think it was raining just a little bit or it was getting to or it was kind of chilly cold it was something like that but I remember we, me and my family was on the freeway. Uh, me and my parents, my siblings, whatever, was on the freeway headed home. Got the call from my grandfather. He said, hey, Papa passed away. We all going to head towards with the whoop. Tell my parents. <laughs> I think my mom kind of already knew, anyways. And uh, we drove right on back to the place of my great grandfather. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you guys ever want to see true love? Take a look at your great grandparents. I had not seen my great grandmother cry before, but I seen her cry when she was right next to her husband, who transferred over to the other world. That right there was tough to see. It was sad, but beautiful at the same time. Because my great grandparents had, had they still been alive, I truly believe that this year would mark be like seventy-two years in marriage they have been with each other. So, and they had just celebrated, I think, a few months back, their sixty-nine years of marriage back in two thousand fourteen. So actually, it'd be seventy one years, something, something like that. But yeah, they've been married for a long time. So, and they both from Texas. <laughs> they moved to California at 
shoot, like around my age, but a little bit, um, but a little bit younger, probably around 26, 25, something like that. But my great grandparents, that I put it this way, there was a generation that grew up where racism was very, very, very heavy. They grew up in a family of a large family of brothers and sisters. They grew up in the foundation of family, the importance of it, the love of it. Regardless of who does what to who, regardless of if so so is crazy or if so so is out of their mind and things of that nature, regardless of all of that. You still love your family no matter what. No matter if somebody smoked out, ganged out, and drugged out, where the fuck they out and they minds about. You still love your family. And excuse my language, you guys already know I'm keeping things. Wherever you guys send me a curse, just know I'm just keeping it real. I could keep it real while cursing, but sometimes I have to get your attention by say a couple words that y'all may say, oh my goodness, you know, give you a good shock. Because I need for you to hear the message. So my apologies for the cursing. I don't try to curse on these podcasts. But I keep it real for y'all. That's 100% sure. To make everything short. Wasn't trying to say to you guys about the story. What I was trying to tell you is that. It's this. While you celebrating your. Christmas festivities and things of that nature. Or for those of us that celebrate Kwanzaa. Or for those that celebrate Hanukkah. Wherever it is that you celebrate on the 25th. I want to let you guys know this. Jesus one is the reason for the season. But do know that he was not born on Christmas Day. He was not born on the 25th. (laughs) Because when you really look at Jerusalem and things of that nature, like, let's start saying, like, that's a habit. We really look at Jerusalem or actually Bethlehem and things of that nature, if I'm not mistaken, should be cold around this time of the year. (laughs) So... You're not quite sure in the Bible what day Jesus' birth was. All I can know is it's that it was quite sure if it was on a cold day or a hot day. <laughs> or a hot evening. Or, you know, or a cool evening. Because if I'm not mistaken, it should be kind of chill around this time of the year. But then again, climate change would kind of switch it. And yes, it's real. We have the government mess around with the climate change and things of that nature. It truly does throw off the balance as to what is natural. That's a tale for another day. We now have to get into that. My point is this. Cherish your family. And friends who are like family. Because at the end of the day. Time's going to keep on passing by, kicking everybody's asses. And next thing you know, you looking up, you're looking at family videos of folks that's not here anymore. So, I'm not sure breaking by spirit sound. I mean, you guys got gifts that you guys want to give and get things of that nature. That's cool. Do you? I'm 29 years old now. I got to the point where, you know, truly. And now I really don't feel that the Christmas spirit this year. At the end of the day, I do have my siblings and I do have my children. I do got my family as well. So I want to see the joy on their faces. You know, and them getting their gifts. I told my people, I said, don't get me nothing. Don't. <laughs> when you work in it's like you know for some of us at working you know we like we tell folks don't get us nothing we can actually get our own sales what we want to get get it at the Christmas you know get the Christmas sales things of that nature and whatever but I tell my people I said they don't have to give me nothing I'm cool 
I'm not quite sure my grandma gonna be doing some gumbo. I'd rather get some gumbo this year for Christmas than anything else. <laughs> I'd rather get